what we're gonna do today is gonna be basically showing you how how does it work if you if you want to design your frame you're not gonna go from um, complete beginning like you can design something out of nowhere so we're gonna start with um, basically tracing one of the frames then modify the shape modify the size modify everything and I'm gonna walk you through the system where you can make extremely simple shape and then just extremely simple 3d model and then we're gonna do some like a uh, more steps and basically like uh, doing some nicer scalloping and playing with the nose pads and stuff like this so i'm just gonna walk you through everything and uh, i'm gonna try to put a lot of uh, emphasis on stuff that i know it's it's working and what you know uh, not supposed to do the moment when you open the fusion 360 this is gonna be the screen and this is what you're gonna see basically untitled file and you're just gonna look at the your whole work area like this. So the first thing what I'm usually doing is just look at the area uh, in a top view. So I have uh, X and Y axis. So here in the in a left uh, in a right corner, you can see that little uh, cube here. So if you press on a top, it's gonna give you basically your view as a X and Y and not in 3D. So we, now we're gonna start designing everything just in 2D. And uh, usually my next step is creating here uh, like a little bit, uh, if you imagine I'm gonna trace the frame, so I'm just gonna put some picture of the frame that I saved somewhere, or you can take the picture of your frame with your phone and you can import it here. So it's, if you look at the, here on a, in a toolbar, you have an insert here. So if you roll it down, you have a canvas. So basically you're gonna insert your, your picture on a background and then you can play with that picture. Of course, uh, see, I, I have it safe on my computer and I'm gonna do this one. Now it's basically asking me here where I wanna put that picture. And because I'm already looking at the X and Y, um, screen so I'm just gonna click on this little squ yellow square and now it looks a bit complex but it's basically asking me if I want to move it around or if I want to change the size so what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna change the size and I'm gonna drag this little corner and make it larger and you can see now there's a little frame. The thing is now I have some picture but I have no idea how big is the frame. So the as, just to be like a little bit like a closer to the real size I know that uh, the size is gonna be approximately between 140 or maybe 140 145 millimeter width. So it's very easy to change the size of this and you can just click here you can open your canvases and click right on, a f on the picture you inserted and press calibrate, which is gonna be changing your uh, picture according to what you want. So I'm gonna click on a edge and the other edge and Fusion is telling me that the size is 141 millimeter. So it looks like this is gonna be slightly larger, so I'm gonna change it. I want it to 145, so I literally just type 145 and press enter. And now the frame is approximately, I think it, it is a size that it should be in a real life. The next step what I'm normally doing is starting with the center line because I'm, what I'm gonna design is gonna be just the left side of the frame and I'm gonna mirror the, uh, the other side. So the key thing here is to figure out approximately where is the center of the frame. And the easiest way is you're just gonna create a sketch on the top of this canvas. Again, just pressing here, create sketch in a corner and click here on the yellow square. And because of the finding the center of the frame is not very easy. If I click here on a line and I wanna create the line somewhere in the center and it's kinda hard to tell where is the center. So I'm doing a little step that helping me to find the center and it's just click somewhere here on the edge of the frame and make a vertical, uh, 
horizontal line on the other edge. And then I know it's going to touch here, this edge, and this edge. And with another line, I can go, if I go along the line, it's just telling me I can touch the line. And then here in the center, it's giving me this triangle. So I click on this triangle, and I know that this is going to be the center of the frame. I know it's a bit, uh, maybe a bit difficult, but it's like a little bit, a little help for you to get the frame as centered as possible. And then I know, I li uh, like always to have at least two lines that they are, uh, I know they're, they're going to be vertical. So it's going to be the center line. And I know the lock is going to be also a vertical line. So what I'm going to do, again, click here on a line and make a vertical line approximately where the lock is. And from this point, I know I have a center of my frame, I have a lock, and I just need to now draw anything in the middle. And for that, I'm using this function, it's called fit point spline. Here is a fourth icon on a, from the left. And I'm gonna start from a, sorry, it's not visible here. And I'm gonna start from the lock here, click here, and then I can make basically points and touching the frame. Normally, what I'm doing is doing the top line, the bottom line, and the lens. And the best way how to make a top line is, I think, normally I'm using between seven and eight points. So you can just start clicking anywhere where you think is the edge of the frame, and it's gonna create line for you. And when I reach the center line, I'll make the last point. And instead of clicking further, I'm just going to press enter. And I have a top line. What I can recommend you normally, uh, if you uh, see here on the bottom line, uh, on the bottom few icons here. So if you press uh, the second one from right, you have here function snap to grid. Uh, definitely disable it because that will force you to uh, click always on a, on a grid that you can see in the background and it's kind of annoying because you're trying to make wavy frame and it's always pushing you to stick in a grid so it's best to have it off like this. Sorry, I forgot to tell you this in advance. So this is the top line. Now I'm going to do exactly the same for the bottom line of the frame. So I'm going to use the fit point spline here and start again from a uh, lock. So click here and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. It's better to have uh, like a not have crazy amount of these points just let's say something between seven and 15 tops because otherwise your frame is going to be super lumpy and it's going to be quite hard to get rid of the lumps. So in this way, it's quite easy. When you're doing this tracing, you don't need to be crazy accurate because you just want to, you don't want to copy the frame one to one. You just want to have kind of similar shape. And afterwards, when we have everything ready, you're going to disable the picture and you're just going to play with your frame. It's just to get you slightly quicker if you, if you're not super skilled designer and you already did in your life hundreds and hundreds of frame, it's always slightly easier to just, if you have a vision what you want to make, just find something similar, do this kind of rough tracing and then afterwards modify it as you want. So that was uh, the bottom line. Now we're going to do lens. I'm usually starting from the top of the lens and again at least 7 to 15 points to get the shape. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And now when you, uh, can you see here the gap between the first point and the last point? You're just going to click on the last point and that's it. And it's automatically connect the whole thing.
I think everything is okay. Everything is clear. Or uh, was it too fast? If any has some, if anybody has some questions, let me know. Uh, I kind of got a little lost from uh, where we had to calibrate. Ah, okay. Uh, I'm just gonna click here to finish sketch. So when you uh, insert here your canvas, then you can see it here on the left side and you can see the picture that you have. If you press, uh, press here on the I, you can disable it, enable it. And if you click right on a calibrate here, it's just basically this, when you click anywhere, it's gonna tell you approximately what is the distance. So for example, if I have a picture, I wanna know what's the bridge size. I can just click here and here, and it's telling me it's 23. But I can always change it for whatever I want. So the same thing with the calibration, I'm doing it for overall size. So again, calibrate, and I'm gonna click on the end lock and the end of the lock, and I change it to let's say 145, 140, anything. And press enter. Is it clearer? Sorry. Um, sorry, I wasn't quite, because uh, when I go to my left side, I see canvas, but then it doesn't show the image file underneath that folder for me. That means I'm going to do another one. So if I here put again the blank page, you press insert canvas, you choose your picture like this, and then you need to press, it's, it is here asking you which uh, face you want to put the canvas and you're going to tell him to put it on that little yellow square. And if you press once, it's gonna give you a little preview and you can press okay. And I think it's gonna be a tiny picture now, but what you can do is here in canvases, you should see your picture already. And then right click, calibrate, and the end of the lock, end of the lock, and it's telling me it's 16 millimeters, so it's absolutely tiny. So I'm gonna change it to one, for zero. It doesn't show up. Oh, click the event. Oh, okay. Oh, calibrate. Okay. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah, I think it makes sense now. Oh, okay, got it. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay, can I continue here? Yes, please. Uh, okay, so as you can see now, I have basically the I have the basic shape and I have the center line. And what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna do the simplest version of the frame, which is gonna be this. And I'm gonna do the extrusion. So give it basically the third dimension. So here you can click on extrude. It's a left uh, second from left, and you click on your frame. Basically, don't click inside of the lens. Click on your frame. And now it's asking you how far you wanna extrude your frame. So I'm gonna do the maximum, like a normal thickness of the material, which is gonna be six millimeter. And suddenly this is basically half of my frame. And this will be uh, now, I, if I wanna see the whole frame, I'm just gonna go to create and press mirror and roll down, press mirror. And now it's asking me what I wanna mirror. I wanna mirror the whole body that I now created. Objects is gonna be, I'm gonna click on my frame. And the mirror plane is asking me, so mirror plane is gonna be my center here. This uh, little flat spot. And this gives me the whole frame. And this is, the absolute basic stuff, how you can make your frame without anything extra, literally just a 2D frame with the extra 3D. So from this point, eventually, I'm gonna show you the, on the next class how to make a G-code for this. this. This will be okay for people who just literally need a CNC to cut 2D shape and they can glue afterwards the nose pads, uh, make the bridge bump and 
make the recess for hinges manually. So this is normally okay. I want to show you now that uh, you just create a 3D model, but you can always very easily go back to your sketch and modify anything which you don't like. So if I look at the TD, I'm just going to click here on the top again. And you can see that there is a lot of problems with that frame. I don't like, well, the, maybe first of all, now it's going to be, we're going to design this frame. So I can turn off this picture on the back and you can see here the canvas and you can see a little eye next to the canvas, next to your picture. You can click on that eye and it will disappear. And now it's only you and your frame. And you can see there is a little issue here in the center. The bottom is way too uh, small. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back to the sketch. You can see here on the bottom, whatever uh, the other steps we did. So the first step was inserting canvas. Then we create a sketch and create this 2D shape. Then I did extrusion. And the last one is mirroring. But I can click again on a sketch. And I can see now the frame. And I don't like this bottom line, so what I'm going to do very easily, just literally click on that little dot and drag it a little higher. The same with this one and changing the bottom line of the frame a little bit as I want it. So this and I also move this a little bit further. The only thing that you need to do now is finish sketch and immediately your frame change the, the shape. And the same thing if I want to go back again, modify this really weird thing on a bridge. I can change the shape a little bit, make it more rounded. And I have I change the shape of the bridge. So this is like absolutely the easiest way how you can how you can do it and you have uh, just one operation creating sketch and extrude it and then create a mirror the whole frame and this is going to be your first first template what normally i'm doing with the frames is doing more steps and then doing the mirror as a completely last last step so now i can i can show you how we can modify this into more finalized frame so i'm going to go back and delete here the last step of mirror just press right right click and press delete and i am back just on my on my left side of the frame and normally like in in this all these engineering softwares is you you should always start if, if you want to do something new with your frame start always with a sketch and you, you can always modify your sketch afterwards but for now we're gonna do the nose pads on this frame so what I'm going to do is tilt it a little bit so I can see this face and create a new sketch. And now it's asking me where I wanted this sketch. So instead of putting it again on this little uh, yellow square, I'm going to put it on the top of the frame here. And the way I, how I'm doing the nose pads is basically create the area which I want my nose pads, uh, like where I want my nose pads. So I'm going to click on the line and tell the frame that it's going to be my top of the nose pad is going to start here and finish here. It's important when you're doing this line, it needs to have these black dots because if you don't hit the frame and you do it like this, it's going to have a white dot and it means that if I'm going to change anything on an original design, it won't move, uh, it won't change with, with the original design. So it always needs to sit on the, uh, the lens or the outside. So I'm going to grab this white line and put it back on a lens and the outside. So with this area, I basically tell the frame that I'm going to have the nose pads in this in this part and as you can see here I'm in a sketch on the top but I'm gonna go back to a solid here on the left and do extrude and now it's asking me where I want to extrude or what I want to extrude so I'm gonna tell him that this area that I create with those two lines 
I want to extrude by four millimeters high because normally uh, I'm not sure guys if you're doing the nose pads out of six millimeter or four I'm usually using four as a like leftovers from the sides so I'm pressing on this uh, clicking on this and the important thing is from this uh, little uh, area is the operation you need to join the materials together because you have some you can cut you can create new body new uh, new component but you want to join these two things together like it's basically glue it on the top and now you have a nose pad it looks absolutely horrible now because it doesn't have the right shape but i'm gonna go uh, through this a little bit later and normally what i'm doing on a on these on almost all my frames is doing a little bit of cut on the bottom side of the frame just to make it slightly lighter and i like when the, uh, there's a different transparency on the top and the bottom so what i want to do is make this bottom area slightly thinner than six millimeter so i'm going to go again into a sketch and create sketch on the top of the frame and what I'm going to tell the frame that the, this bottom thicknessing is going to start here on this edge of the lock goes in a lens and it's all it has both black dots so it means that it's, it's perfectly um, attached to the frame and it's going to finish here on my uh, nose pad and I'm going to make a line here so as you can see, like I have now this whole area that I can, instead of, I go back to a solid and instead of extrude, I'm still going to use the functional extrude, but in SOLIDWORKS, you can extrude and create more material. If I grab this arrow, you can see I can add more or I can drag it on the other side and go in a minus and basically uh, cut material off. So here it's, uh, telling me that I move minus two millimeters, which is perfect for me, or I can just move minus 1.5 millimeter. And now it looks super rough, super geometric, which of course I don't want. So I'm gonna now play with a function, it's called fillet, and make everything smoother. So first of all, I'm gonna get rid of this line because it looks really weird. So I'm just gonna click here on a inside line you can see here this one and I want this to be very smooth almost all the way down so I just need a big radius here so I'm gonna create here the radius of the size let's say 80 millimeters which sounds like a lot but it's just gonna give me this nice transition between this edge and this edge and now the nose pads it's very similar operation. I'm going to go back to a fillet and click here this time on a top edge and a top edge. And I'm going to tell Solid War, uh, Fusion that I want a radius here on the top and I'll put it, let's say, eight millimeters. And it's going to create this like a nice nose pad shape. Thing. but when you do uh, when you start uh, because this will look a little weird because it will look like you glued something on the top so it's nicer to have here again a nice transition so I'm gonna create one more fillet here in a corner and I'm gonna say it's gonna be 10 millimeters let's say and it looks much closer to uh, how the frame supposed to look like if you want, you can also, uh, because normally it's, it looks quite nice if you have here the sharp edge where the nose pad starts, but you can also change that and add small radius here on the top. And this is basically how it looks when you have slightly more advanced shape. And in this moment, when I know where I put all these uh, geometries, I can do the mirroring. So I go here in a create, mirror and do the same thing object i'm gonna select the body mirror plane is gonna be this center and you have your 
frame with a additional nose pads and a little bit of scalloping here on the bottom of your frame. And because you create every time new sketch for every single operation, it means that if you don't like anything about your frame, you can still hear in your, basically in your timeline, you can see all this operation. If I go back to the first sketch, I can, for example, change the bridge size. I can just pull this a little bit further. This a little bit further, make a bridge wider, press this and everything also change now. So because it's, a, it's a, because every single operation is in a different sketch, so it can change automatically. And also here, let's say I don't like this uh, lock and I want it a bit lower. I can just take it and drag it lower, change this shape a little bit. And you can see everything is changed left, right sides changed. Then you can see like maybe I have a problem with the position of the nose pads. It seems like they might be a little bit too low. So I'm gonna look here and I know the operation nose pads was the second sketch here. I can open this sketch and move. You can see these two lines here, top and the bottom. And I can drag this line higher than it was before. A little bit and maybe the nose pad might be too long so I'm gonna make it shorter again drag left and then drag the right a little bit higher finish sketch and you can see the nose pads moved higher so you can always change everything everything like this and in this moment normally this is all I'm doing uh, for the frames I'm gonna add uh, hinges but it's gonna be in the next class so this is like a how you can do this and for now if you if you clamp on your CNC your material and you have two nose pads already glued on your material you can machine everything in a in the same same round basically you can make this shape um, if you want I can um, because normally this is what how I designing my frames the top line is in a maximum thickness of the material, bottom line is a little bit thinner, but you can also uh, do a little bit skimming on the top. So it's gonna give your frame a little bit more scalloping or more drama. So what I can do again, I'm gonna, because if I, every time I wanna do more operations on a frame, it's best to delete your uh, mirroring because otherwise you will need to do the same thing on the left and right. So I'm gonna delete the mirror and I'm gonna add, uh, create another uh, sketch here on the top. Again, put it here on the top of your material. And again, I'm gonna do similar thing. Line, I want the top scalloping start here and it goes like this and I wanted to finish it like here. So this is my basically uh, left and right limits. I'm gonna go to extrude and tell it that I wanna minus 1.5 millimeter in the depth. And now it looks weird again. So I'm gonna create fillet. Fillet needs to go into uh, inside corner here and inside corner here. And the radius, it needs to be quite big, so it, it looks natural. natural. So I'm gonna put 80 millimeters. Ah, it's too much. 50 millimeters. So, and now I create this top, top scalloping. And I'm gonna do mirroring again, so you can see the whole thing. And you can see now. Sorry, can I have a quick yeah. question? Sure. Uh, uh, it's about the, uh, changing your design. Uh, do you ever use uh, constraints or do you keep to freehand tools? I'm trying to keep everything. Uh, that's actually a really good question. Uh, I'm trying to keep, keep everything without constraints because uh, it's going to make a lot of mess when you try to uh, scale your frame. 
because constraints will try to stay in the same place and it's it just it's just mess. So if, if it's everything freehand, it's much better. So if you look at the original sketch, there is almost zero constraints. There is a constraint that this is uh, vertical with this line, but that's it. Every single point is basically freehand. Okay, okay. I was getting in you know, a mess with constraints. Just <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a, and, and I got on my own. And that's a, that's a good idea. And also be really careful when you're doing this middle line. It's very tempting to start your middle line in the center of your uh, whole sketching area. But that's a, uh, that's a big problem because otherwise you cannot move your bridge easily if you, if you uh, constrain it to a center. So it's better to have it like this. Okay, thank you. No worries. So uh, this is your now, this is basically your frame. And this can be like your template for any other sizes or any other versions. And for example, if you don't like this top scalloping, especially on this model, you can see that this scalloping or this uh, thicknessing is this operation. If you click on this area where I create this, th this thicknessing, here on the bottom, it shows you which operation it is. So if I look, if I click here on this bottom thicknessing, it's telling me that was this operation in a, in a timeline. If I click on a nose pad, it's telling me this, this operation. So if I don't like the top one, I don't need to delete it. I can just click on this operation and press suppress feature. And it will disappear, but I can use it later if I want it for uh, maybe if I have a larger size and I want to sl slightly lower the, lower the weight, I can just turn it on again, unsuppress, and it's going to appear. But in the meantime, I can still change the size. I'm going to show you right now that if I don't like the size in general, the best way, because there is a few ways how you can modify just your 3D model, but it's going to give you loads of issues because if you just change your 3D model, it's not going to change your first sketch. So whatever you change on your sketch is not going to work well. So the best way is go back to your original sketch here. Open it and use here the operation, it's called sketch scale. And in this sketch case, if I'm going to click on this, I can, it's asking me which entities I want to uh, change uh, the size. So I'm going to click on my top line, lock, bottom line, and lens. Uh, which point it's asking me like uh, where I want to change the size. I'm going to tell him that I want to start from here, from the center. And now it's telling me that uh, I'm not changing size and the scale is one. But I want to, let's say, 10% larger frame. So I'm going to put 1.1 and the frame is going to be larger now. And you can see now the whole frame is larger and everything's changed proportionally. So it's a very easy to uh, easy way how you want to if you want to change your frame. This is like a in this like most of my frames are in this in this uh, in this stage when I can have uh, when I can just machine the nose pads, machine everything. Then I'm gonna do the the recess for the hinges. But that's basically it for me and the uh, rest of the operations I'm going to do manually. Uh, for people who are using Fusion or uh, who are a bit more skilled on, in uh, CNCing, it's sometimes good to add a splay for your nose pads. So I'm going to show you, it's, it's not that easy to do it, but I'm going to show you that it's, it's possible and it's not that hard. So again, it's a new feature on a frame, so I'm going to delete here the last operation, which was mirroring. And what I need to do is basically create like a simulate the tool which is going to skim the nose pad here. Uh, so I'm going to create a sketch, but this time I need to create a sketch here on the center. And now it's going to get a bit uh, crazy. <laughs> so I'm going to create here the line somewhere on the as you can see, this is the, the center. I'm going to click here on this line and make a little line in some uh, angle which is not vertical or horizontal, something between something like a 30 degrees. Then I'm going to do horizontal line, 
vertical and connect it here. So basically now I'm simulating the tool which, uh, and I know that my tool for the nose pads is 30 degrees. So I'm going to tell, I'm, I'm going to press here. Um, this operation is a sketch dimension. I'm going to press sketch dimension and select this line and this line and tell, tell it that I want a 30 degrees here. And this is going to be basically my tool for uh, making display for the for the nose pads. Sadly, this is just one operation out of two for this uh, for this thing. So I need to create another sketch, and this time I'm going to put it on the top of the material, like I did it with uh, nose pads and and scalloping. And I need to tell that tool that it needs to follow actually this line where I have my nose pads. And the easiest way how to do this is using the function that's called projection. So if I go here, create, uh, sorry, uh, I forget where it's, pro uh, here, project. So I'm going to project the line or you can press um, P and you're just going to tell it that you need to go, you need to follow this little line, this little line, this little line, this, this, and this for cutting and press OK. And now I create a tool for cutting uh, the shape and I uh, basically draw the line where it's supposed to go. And in a, if you go back to solid, this is the function called uh, sweep. And that, this function is asking me which profile I want to sweep. So I want to sweep this profile, which is going to be the, my tool. And the path is going to be that line that I projected. And you can see it creates nice splay for the pads. And if somebody's going to have, a, have time and uh, you can do this on your CNC so you don't need a special tool or you don't need a special, uh, you, you don't need to do it manually. So you can do it all on your CNC. So you can have like a nice splay of the pads. And it all depends because you can, uh, if you look at the, how we design the tool, we can move the tool a bit lower and make the display larger. So basically your uh, display will start a bit, a bit lower. Uh, this is the one thing that I'm sometimes doing, but I'm not, not doing this all the time. And if I'm machining this uh, a machining frame on my CNC, I'm doing this on a special special tool. So you can still make the design of this. And if you don't want to use it afterwards, you can just here again press suppress feature. And you can have it for later and you can still modify the shape and everything, but this will appear ready. Um, normally, like if you have a frame like this, um, because it's it's fairly quick operation to prepare all this, uh, then I'm going to start playing with uh, the fitting for for person. So that's why I was asking you if you can make a picture of yourself or use mine. So I'm going to create another canvas and I'm going to try to put this frame on my face to see how it fits. Um, in this case, if I have the nose pads and everything, I will press here insert and another canvas. I'm going to select my photo and I will place this canvas. It's a little weird. I'm, I'm going to explain later why I'm putting it in this place. I'll put it here basically on the back of the frame, like a knot on the front of the frame here on the back. And you can see there is again that window with my with the shape of the picture. I'm gonna make it like this. It's as you can see the picture is still very small, and you need to do the calibration of your picture again. And as I was saying, the easiest way is for some people. Some people can use 
their own PD because maybe you know that your PD is 62 millimeter, 64 millimeter, and you can use that to calibrate your own photo. But actually, I don't know what is my PD, so I'm using the the card. So I'm just gonna take the picture of me with some card, and press here. I can see the those two canvases. Again, calibrate, and I know the all the cards have 85.6 millimeter. So I'm going to click on the edge and the edge of uh, card and type 85.6 millimeter. And you can see this is the shape of my frame and this is my face. So it looks like it's really, really huge. And also I need to move my own picture a little bit further. So what I'm going to do is click right click on the picture of me and press edit canvas. Here you have a quite a lot of interesting things. Uh, the first thing that I think if you are doing this for the first time, uh, normally you have this on, this display through. Just unclick that because it's just gonna give you that, uh, that it looks like your frame is transparent which is annoying. Uh, you can change uh, canvas opacity, you can make it slightly darker and importantly you can move your picture. So you can see all these operations, this is the flip direction, flip direction, move up, down and if you click on this little square it's basically freehand moving. So you can kind of place the frame where it's supposed to sit and press OK. I'm just gonna now, um, I'm I, sorry I didn't explain you why you're rotating your um, your uh, workplace. It's the best way how to do it is if you press shift and the center on your mouse, the, the ro roller, you can move it. And if you don't want it crooked, just press here on this little, uh, you can here have your square uh, sorry, cube and press this bottom and it's going to be perfectly aligned. So, and as you can see, this is your frame and I think the overall size is okay. The bridge is definitely way too wide. So what I'm going to do is go back again to my sketch on the first one, the original one where we made a frame here and as you can see, that was the, I'm going to change it as we had it before. And you can see that was the line for uh, that is changing our bridge. So now I know I can just drag the whole line a little bit inside. And I'm going to change the bridge. And as you can see now, it fits better, although, although but the shape kind of changed a little bit. So I can go back into... Uh, drawing board and here I made a little bit of mistake so it seems like this is a bit lumpy so I'm gonna change the shape of that to have a nicer shape and that's basically it how you can uh, quickly design like a, and uh, double check if the frame will fit your face or not based on the size and you don't need to measure other frames or do anything just literally create your own design and make sure with the scaling up and or scaling down you can just modify the, the size. And if you don't want to look at me I can disable it. Um, guys, do you have, uh, I hope it wasn't crazy fast and of course there's going to be the video afterwards that you can watch and uh, see how uh, everything was done. Uh, do you have any questions? Uh, yes, yes, I do. Awesome, 
No, sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say thanks. Thanks so much for doing this. This was super helpful. No worries. I'm happy, happy to help and hopefully this will help somebody because I know it's a, it may be a bit more engineering approach, but it's going to give, uh, help you to actually use this software without any issues and you don't need to try different approaches because I think this approach is fairly logical and it's going to help you to uh, successfully make the frames and you can change everything without messed up completely your 3D model. But uh, back uh, to your question, sorry, uh, what, uh, how can I help you? Uh, just a quick question. Uh, I'm not using the CNC. Uh, I'm using a 3D printer to quick prototype and use a, a pantographs style router. Uh, and thus I, I need uh, the fillets and uh, uh, smoothing on uh, on on the on the uh, base, but it really is really finicky in this program. I find it's, it's always uh, says it's uh, impossible, but I don't know why. Uh, you have any idea how? The, how the can? Yeah, mm -hmm. the, the fillets are a bit tricky because you need to know on uh, hundred percent which fillet you want to create and where you want to create. So. It's a, it's a bit tricky and as we did it before, for example, with this fillet, uh, you have a two options basically what you can do. You can, uh, sorry, um, go here and I'm gonna delete this edge. Uh, basically, if you wanna smoothen this edge, you have two options. You can click on this, uh, sorry. Uh, you can click here on this inside edge or the outside. If you, if you look and if you want to click on the top one and put, let's say, as I put it before, 80, 80 millimeters, it's not going to be possible. It will allow you only to do the edge in a height of that thing. So you can do maximum 1.5 and it's going to give you this. But if you click on the, if you click on the other edge, if you click here on this edge, you can put basically anything and it's just basically going to start from that that face and it's going to go all the way all the way down so it's just literally just to try always like if you're not 100 percent sure what's going to happen try both uh, both edges and it's going to show you very easily what's going to do uh, what's going to happen okay thanks for the tip no worries uh yeah it's a it's like a little bit sometimes hit and miss and uh if you if you try it a few times and then you basically learn that what's going to happen, it, it's going to be much easier. Okay, but, thanks. But of course, like if you if you guys want, uh, we're going to of course post this on online, and uh, I'm going to put on the um, on our group download for this file, so you can open this frame again in your Fusion, and you can look at every single step how I did it, and if something doesn't work. You can just open my file and see like a where is the point or if the point looks like the same or if there's any any weird mate or something. Uh, just like a quick uh, because as you can see normally uh, if everything is perfect, everything here is blue and white. If you see the yellow color, it means there's some issue with something. So you can click on it and you can see that there is a one line that doesn't have any more the, the original projection. So you can delete it and that's it. And like at this operation with a splay of pads, I'm not recommending doing this for now because it's a bit bit tricky operation and all this all these previous operations they always work in absolutely great with you if you're changing design changing thicknesses changing anything this operation is only one that sometimes is giving issues and you need to sometimes modify it a little bit um, I realized I want to show you one thing that is quite helpful for when you doing the frames basically like freehand like this it's quite tricky to keep the because you're not using any dimensions anywhere. 
So if you want to unify it, like uh, having the same mass of the material here on the top and the bottom, or having that, this whole rim in unified thickness, there is a function that it's called offset. And I'm using it quite often because you can press that and click on your lens and it helps you to drag your lens basically outside or inside. So what you can do, you can drag it outside a little bit and see how if you, if you want your rim four millimeter in the thickness, you can just drag it like this. And now you have this outline and you can just drag your original points of your, of your, of your frame and touch basically that, that outline that we just create. And it's gonna give you perfectly that four millimeter thickness of your frame overall. And it's not gonna be lumpy. And you can just delete it afterwards. And now you know that here you have a four millimeter, you here on the bottom have a four millimeter, and it looks much more unified. But of course, if this is the, the way how you want your frame, sometimes you wanna have a little bit more on the top so it doesn't look that small, so you can just drag it back. Um, one another super, uh, quite helpful thing when you're doing frames where you have a sharp, basically bends like this, it's good to have, if you want to have a sharp corner, having three points next to each other. If you have them quite close, it helps you to create uh, sharp corners or modify that a bit more. So if you have, if you will have, for example, this one, this one, and this one, it's going to be really pain to make sharp corners. So every time you have maybe the area for your nose or something, having points closer together, and it's gonna help you to modify the shape. Even now I completely messed up the shape. But we'll see how it looks on me. Yeah, it's weird frame. Any question guys, anything? Uh, that I can help with, or if there's any questions. Uh, Matty, I just had a question going back to the sketching. Um, I'm just wondering how do we switch from like a curved line to like a line where we want it perfectly straight? Yeah, it's, if you go, if I go back to the original sketch. Uh, sorry. Here. On a, on a top, uh, you have the line, and this is your basically straight line. So you just press once, and you can drag it, because normally it's uh, kind of giving you opportunity to go vertical or horizontal, and you can see on the one side, it's changing the length, and on the other side, you can see the angle. So you can go easily, you know that if you're going straight vertically or horizontally, because it needs to be 90, uh, 90 degrees or zero, and your curve line is the fourth icon here. And you just basically, ah, sorry, I'm drawing in an invisible area. Um, and you're just basically clicking till it looks okay. Yeah. And then press enter. But then once we've already started using that spline tool, mm -hmm. then how do we transition like say the last point you just made, how do you make that completely straight? Um, it's basically because we, we started with uh, creating the center line and mm -hmm. the lock, and we connect it with the, with the fit point spline. So if I do it again, so you start from the lock from this point, you creating your line, line uh, your spline, then you mm -hmm. finish it on a, on a center line you just click okay. it, so until you see X, and yeah. it's still asking you to go further, but that's it what you want. So you don't need to press anything and then press enter, and that's it. And that's basically the line is created. Oh, okay, okay, got so, it. So uh, basically like a, it's, uh, this will ask you forever to do more and more points. So you just need to press enter or, or the other way how you wanna, if you wanna close the spline is if you go around, 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 and go to your original point, if you press your, if you go to your original point, it will automatically close. 
Okay. Okay. Got it. Thank you. No worries. Perfect, guys. If you don't have any more questions, or uh, I know probably you're gonna spend a few hours to playing uh, with the software yourself. Um, don't worry if you have any any questions. Just you can drop your message on on WhatsApp group, or uh, directly to me. I can help you help you with with anything. And and yeah, I think the next round we're gonna do uh, uh, we're gonna use we're gonna do a super quick model like this again so you will you will see it again and we're gonna prepare this uh, and we're gonna play with the placing of hinges and I'm gonna walk you through all the types of hinges and how they need to be placed and uh, what's the best way how to make a recess for them so yeah if you have if you have anything that you also uh, would like to be covered next time let me know